When you first join the MCTC choirs, one of the things that you will receive is a CD-ROM. It's called the Choir CD, and everyone gets one. You may wonder how to use this CD, and this is what this video is all about. It's a demonstration of how to use the materials on this CD. So the first thing you want to do is take your CD and insert it into your computer. It will not work in a regular CD player. It's a CD-ROM. It has data, so it's for computers only. Now when you are using a Mac, it's going to come up on your desktop and it's going to look like a CD. With a PC, you will probably get a window that asks you what you want to do with it, and you should choose Open Files. Now it's come up. In the Mac, I'm going to double click to open it. And then I've got my folder, and you see that it says Choir CD, and then it will have the semester and the year. Let's open this up and take a look and see what's inside. So you see several folders here. See both, these are materials for both choirs, so you'll need to look into that. CC stands for College Choir, with the spring semester and the 13 for the year. VE stands for Vocal Ensemble. And then Choir XML files we'll come back to later. So let's take a look and see what's in the Vocal Ensemble. You'll have similar materials in the College Choir. You'll see here that we have analysis, diction, and music. Let's first look at analysis. When you open this up, you'll find that you have PDFs. Now these PDFs contain a lot of information. Let's take a look at one of them. You'll see here that there is a pronunciation and translation guide. Top line here, the pronunciation is written in International Phonetic Alphabet. And if you need help with that, IPA it's called, you can go to the choir website and look for that. It'll be under the help pages. Then below that you'll see that there's a word-for-word -word translation. You can see these are not very fancy. They literally take each word and translate it. So below that you also have the full sort of translation that makes a little bit more sense. It's put into a little bit more context. It's important for singers to know every single word that they're singing while they're singing it, but it's also important to have the great overall picture, which you have here. Then, sometimes background and history will be included, and finally you'll have an analysis. Now the analysis gives you measure numbers, usually, and it'll tell you if there's repeated material, and it'll say what's going on. This can be really, really useful for helping you learn your music more quickly because if you know where there's repeated material and where there's new material, you can figure out just what you need to learn. Finally, if there's recordings that I find, I'll link to them and you can find them on YouTube or you can find them on iTunes and so on. So that is what the analysis pages look like. Let's look now at diction. Now the diction files are mp3 files of your diction. The best way to use these is to have your music open and have a pencil handy. You can double click on these and they will begin to play in your favorite media player this like iTunes. This is the iTunes. diction file for El Grillo, the Spanish version. El Grillo. So you see it's playing. Bueno cantante. I'm going to pause this. What's neat about this is that you can repeat things just by scrolling back a little bit, play it again. El Grillo es un bueno cantante. Then you can take and you can write that pronunciation right in your own music the way that you hear it in a way that makes sense to you. You can also use the International Phonetic Alphabet that's found on your analysis pages. So the combination of the two things 
should be really, really helpful to you. So that's the diction files. All right, now let's look at the music folder. Now the music folder holds MIDI files. You'll notice that after each file there's an extension MID. This is a MIDI file and these files will play in most media players like iTunes or QuickTime or Windows Media Player. However, if you have a music notation program installed on your computer like Finale or Finale Notepad, they may open automatically in those programs. That's the case with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click and choose open with so I can choose the program I want to open it with. And I'm going to choose QuickTime Player. It's going to bring up the player. So I'm going to play it right now. Now you can hear it's not particularly loud and the sounds are a little bit weird. But still, it will be able to help you learn your part. However, this isn't the best way to be able to play your MIDI files. What the choir members have found to be really useful is to install a free program on their computer called Finale Notepad. You can find this program by typing Finale, F-I-N-A-L-E, Notepad, into Google or another search engine. If you'd like more information on how to use Finale Notepad with these MIDI files, see the other video on the Choir website called Using XML Files with Finale Notepad. Which leads us to this one more folder here, which is the Choir XML files. And you can just see that these are organized by vocal ensemble, college choir, and both choirs. And any file that you want for those are here. They have the extension XML. And if you just double click on them, they'll probably open a text editor. You'll have to do open with, like again on the Mac. Control, open with, and then you would look for your program such as Finale Notepad, and you probably have to go to other. So that is it. That is how to use the Choir CD-ROM.